we um, we were wondering how much time we had with you. Uh, an hour and a half. Oh, okay. Oh, wonderful. Well, I'll talk very slowly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, th well, thank you so much for having us. And um, we wanted to share with you a, an idea that we had to tell a story um, about kind of Taiwan's digital democracy uh, through the lens of you and your life. Um, so we've kind of got um, an idea of what this could look like, which we could talk you through. And then if you had some questions and thoughts, then perhaps we could answer those and discuss those. Sure, so yeah. go ahead. Okay, great. Well, the context of, um, of this story is that, um, you know, Taiwan has successfully or is successfully countering um, the virus and um, using the power of digital democracy tools and countries around the world are looking to Taiwan and reaching out to Taiwan um, to learn and apply this approach. Um, and um, in terms of on the world stage, you are a tech and cultural icon uh, in Taiwan and then this success is expanding abroad and people are looking to you, to your leadership. Um, and um, things such as Taiwan can help is, is this kind of global outreach for Taiwan. Um, so as the world continues to face these challenges, uh, it's crucial that the world understands that um, in order to replicate this success, an understanding of um, the approach and the philosophy and your personal approach and your personal philosophy is, is key to this. Um, for other countries to really understand. So um, I realise we haven't actually introduced ourselves, so um, we can introduce ourselves mm. um, and as an international filmmaking team. Mm -hmm. And um, Chen Yu, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Well, I think Audrey oh, knows. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I've known Chen Yu um, since before she had memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah, Charlotte and I have worked on a few different projects mm -hmm. from UK to Taiwan already, mm -hmm. and now she suddenly lives here. So we just um, mm -hmm. wrapped up a film project with Guo Yihui. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I think we, we are certainly um, quite familiar with working yeah. together as an international mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we worked, we worked on projects that, with Chen Yu's work, you know, Com connecting um, culture, music well, culture, like popular culture, yeah, popular yeah. culture in in you know Asia and in England, yeah. and then we've worked together on you know those projects, um, editing and. But apart from that, because uh, when we work together, it will be more like research oriented type of projects. Mm. But um, Charlotte's work as a filmmaker for Oxfam, for yeah, three four years, which sent her to. Iraq with Ethiopia yeah. and India. Yes, yeah, so, Iran. Yeah. yeah. Well, my it's um, it was wonderful to be introduced to Chen Yu back in Liverpool. I'm from Liverpool, um, and um, actually recently Chen Yu is more of a local than I am because I haven't lived in Liverpool for a while. And we worked on some projects together about Liverpool culture, like the Beatles. Um, and um, the China, China wind music and people connecting with it in England. And, um, but my other work has been um, work that kind of engages with communities who, who don't often have a voice and don't have the tools to advocate um, and, and push for their needs. And, my studies were in law and community participation through theatre. So I took that and applied that to filmmaking. So often, and, and sometimes that can be as simple as just the lens through which you see the power dynamics of a, a filming relationship. Um, so often if, if I'm working with an organisation such as Oxfam, who I was filming with in telling stories of conflict in like Nigeria, around Boko Haram, or in Iraq, um, the the power dynamics of a group coming in with a media agenda from a, a charity and being Western and speaking mainly English, um, how how to engage participation and how to tell a story that 
that people who whose story you're telling want to tell and how to draw that you know from them and work with them so that's kind of the the lens that I bring to to filmmaking and um, I worked in Iraq for six months and that was really wonderful because it's it's often quite heartbreaking to launch into a, a situation and sometimes you have to it, it's a crisis emergency like a conflict or a, a drought or something so I have to kind of go to the desert in Ethiopia and you know meet with people and gather stories and then go back and edit them because we're trying to raise money but to be able to be in a place for six months and engage with families and tell a story it was um, really wonderful to yeah to be able to get to know people and tell tell stories in that way so so yeah so we we, we bring our, our different um, kind of lenses to to this project which we hope would contribute well because we have a, an international eye um, and we're we're both used to kind of working cross-culturally and um, knowing kind of what Western audiences are interested in and what kind of gets their gets their interest. Um, so but also with a, a human centered approach. Um, so in terms of a, a, a story and um, the the kind of journey which we're interested in, in telling is that um, we love to show Taiwan's flourishing di digital democracy, social innovation and virus prevention strategies through your life and, and work. Um, we could start with kind of a montage of past interviews and bringing people up to where we are now in terms of how Taiwan has successfully um, dealt with the virus and how um, has combated misinformation and, and things like that. But then starting to show what the rest of 2020 brings, what the challenges bring and how that same approach that has been used is, is moving forward and continuing to develop the virus response or um, de developing digital democracy. So um, we thought possible subjects um, that we could follow, um, but we thought it would be wonderful to talk about your you know, childhood and your work with the Sunflower Movement and leading up to it. Um, but also branching off into uh, your philosophy and perhaps using creative ways for audiences to reflect and react to that, um, such as you know using narration with poetry recital, but combining it with animation for a, a chance for things like that to sink in and reflect, because it's about um, showing the philosophy and the approach as well as the practical outcomes of, of the work that you've done. Um, but we we thought kind of showing the digital democracy in action, such as, such as meetings that are tackling misinformation and developing plans and strategies, and um, showing those conversations, showing how the approach is applied. Um, and then also perhaps looking into any challenges that there might be in, you know, I've, I've read that you are, uh, see yourself as a, a facilitator and a, a conduit and that there are people who, who want you to be more of a leader, more kind of telling others what to do and what is that clash and what what keeps you focused on, on prioritising being a facilitator and not um, grabbing power or, you know, using your ego because that's mm. a politician mm. that a lot of the time we don't see mm -hmm. um, and it's very <coughs> interesting so what are the what are the grapplings that you that you mm -hmm. have to deal with um, and um, then we were thinking about it would be great to show your outreach um, to the international world through Taiwan can help you know what talks are you giving and can we be behind the scenes of those talks and see people's response um, to that and um, perhaps look at international hackathons and what what your approach is through that and how that bring, builds better um, participation. Um, and then looking at the apps that you've developed, it, it would be really interesting to see behind the scenes of, of meetings mm -hmm. where you're kind of dealing with the collaboration and voluntary collaboration and how this 
facilitated nature actually looks like in practice um, and um, successing and discussing past successes with the um, uh, oh what, what's the the wonderful saying of um, of, of your work and um, that it's fun and fair yeah. fast fair and fun mm -hmm. um, so to, to see that in action and rec recount past things such as the um, you only have one butt man mm -hmm. and um, the great response to the young boy who had mm -hmm. the pink mask and stories like that that really illustrate um, mm -hmm. uh, your work and then also our thought was um, perhaps to follow a few people that you've interacted with mm -hmm. and spotlight their lives so that we can see a, for an international audience see a wider Taiwan in terms of um, people's life and also their um, thoughts about being citizen participants mm -hmm. and um, the responsibility <coughs> that they feel or the, the role that they feel they have. So, so that's kind of our thoughts as to the um, structure of the story of what we could or would like to do. And then um, in order to create this and have something to pitch to a streaming service, because mm -hmm. um, we have contacts in the Guardian film documentaries or with Netflix and we, we thought to film a few, uh, some meetings and some examples mm -hmm. and put that together into like a pitch, um, mm -hmm. you know, a 10 minute pitch document short mm -hmm. film. It could then, we could then use it to see Mm -hmm. um, to give the opportunity for a streaming platform mm -hmm. to um, to have it, you know, mm -hmm. to to invest in in the film as a as a longer, wider film. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then we thought the type of audience that would be interested in this film, the international audience, would be, you know, type of people who are interested in um, democratic in things and positive change in the world and would watch. Um, things like the um, Knock Down the House mm. or Joshua versus Superpowers, mm. Joshua, oh yeah, Teenager versus Superpower mm. and The Great Hack, um, mm. kind of very people-led documentaries that tackle mm. a wider issue that people are very interested and concerned about but find it very difficult to engage with so it's great to engage with through a person. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, so those are our thoughts and we have um, Aside from streaming platform um, contact and interest to kind of bring them on board, we have a standing invitation to screen the film from the Taiwan Studies program at the University of Nottingham, um, mm. with some strong links there and um, the so us so us yeah mm -hmm. um, and so us um, and more screening opportunities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so those those are our thoughts, and um, we'd love to know if you had any questions mm -hmm. or any thoughts on it. Sure. Uh, so um, there's multiple teams working on very similar things right now. Um, we have uh, from France, right? Uh, Elaine, uh, the the filmmaker, has been uh, mm. pretty doing the, the same thing, mm. uh, and he filmed, for example, my conversation with uh, Brian Tsung, Brian Ye, so <coughs> and some of my meetings and. Uh, shadow me in the social innovation lab meetings and mm. things like that uh, and um, actually our um, film filmmaker uh, uh, the director it's in um, also um, uh, main contributor actually to the current version of the Taiwan civic participation website mm. um, um, is um, doing uh, all the footage taking uh, of all the major like collaboration meetings, preparatory meetings of the monthly uh, open uh, participation officer meetings and so on to get the footages out. Uh, and so of course uh, there's raw footage and there's this edited narrative mm. uh, that you're talking about uh, and I think the angle uh, that you're um, trying to, to present is pretty good. Uh, but just yesterday, uh, Andrew Leonard uh, at uh, Wire.com uh, published something very much like the angle that you just described. Mm. And uh, Gideon um, uh, Lewis Cross uh, uh, also did the uh, kind of preliminary um, analysis of a lot of that work uh, for Wired as well. Carl mm. Miller for BBC Click mm. uh, did a long episode before the coronavirus, but then the BBC Click follow up with another episode. So uh, I, I said this not to discourage you, but to say that there's a, a, a lot of footage to mm. work with uh, as materials. 
Uh, and the good thing is that every single one that I just named uh, agreed to share either the transcript or the recording of mm -hmm. their sessions with me uh, under Creative Commons, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that you can freely remix uh, those works. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it also means it is a challenge, right? You have to offer fresh perspectives mm -hmm. um, and, and, and building on their work. Uh, and so that's what we're looking at. So as with any other director um, or filmmaker, um, my, my condition is the same, right? So this conversation is to be published <laughs> uh, on YouTube under Creative Commons. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, whatever footage that we work uh, with ourselves uh, and provide to you or with you filming us uh, need to be provided as Creative Commons education mm -hmm. for other people to remix us. As well, mm. um, that's my only condition, really. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, mm. yeah. And um, the the work that the um, the French filmmaker is making mm -hmm. is the a, a particular. Yeah, yeah. I think he he did one on 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 uh, Joshua Wong, mm. uh, and and I think it it was. I'm not sure whether it's on Netflix or some some other um, um, uh, streaming. Mm. Uh, device uh, and uh, I mean it's, it's all very confusing right it is to be festivals and then the, uh, the theaters and then the streaming services mm. but now the order could be any order yeah. <laughs> <Right>? yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we don't know right yeah. uh, so, so I don't know uh, who is he pitching to but mm. he I think is at the editing stage now uh, mm. and so for BBC Click of course they've already aired mm. a few episodes but we're also looking for future collaborations as well mm. um, and, and that's the, the two main kind of outlets Mm. Uh, but of course, if you would like to work with uh, more outlets, uh, that's good. Uh, there's also another team quite independent because they're crowdfunded, uh, uh, headed by uh, Adi, the, the YouTuber, uh, and also Jitsi, uh, Jitsi, and, and Aaron Nia, and uh, you know the designer. Yeah. Uh, they they are the team uh, behind Taiwan Can Help That Us. Mm. Uh, right, so they posted this um, New York Times advertisement, mm. <laughs> uh, but then built a website, which was the main product, and then people start uh, the YouTubers. I mean, community started mm. to reuse the materials they have uh, and make trending videos that talk mm. about how it's uh, kind of coronavirus efforts, uh, and which went actually quite trending in many different cultures. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, Jane probably knows about that network, uh, and so I believe they would with. Uh, roller the CC uh, to to also make some preliminary footage. I did an interview uh, mm -hmm. with Mr. Reese uh, on, on pretty much the same topic, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think they could not uh, uh, at this moment find a kind of really mainstream outlet, mm -hmm. uh, and so they have footages. Uh, but I, I don't think they are uh, doing more releases at this moment. Uh, mm -hmm. But of course, that's also a, a kind of friendly alliance that you mm -hmm. can work with because they've interviewed quite a few people mm -hmm. um, and. That's that's off the top of my head. I'm sure if I check the transcript website, I can find more. Mm. Uh, but these are the kind of concurrent teams. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and how did the teams uh, negotiate mm. access to meetings? Mm. Did they? Mm -hmm. I mean, would um, if we were to be able mm -hmm. to, to film you? Yeah, my, my, my open office hours, like basically anything that takes place in Social Innovation Lab, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as you check in advance and get consent from the other people who shows up at the same space, mm -hmm. uh, is filmable. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very clear, right? So if it's within the cabinet property, then uh, we do our own filming mm -hmm. uh, and then we release it on our YouTube channel. Uh, and then, of course, always under Creative Commons attribution, uh, which means that you can't just work with that material, but you don't mm. get to bring your camera here. Mm. Uh, but, of course, um, we are bringing cameras everywhere, 360, mm. Insta, 360, uh, virtual reality, and so on. So there's um, a lot of footages. But if you like uh, your own footages, then that's the Social Innovation Lab. It's an open space. Mm. It's a park, really. There's no walls. So feel mm. free just to... to um, stream mm. uh, whenever you feel like mm. yeah. and um, we'd um, also love to know kind of the rest the rest of the year what challenges do you see mm -hmm. coming up what do you think your key moments might mm -hmm. be yeah the presidential hackathon is always um, a, a good um, 
lots of good optics and visuals and, mm. uh, and, and uh, plenty of footages as well. And each of the presidential headphone teams uh, carry their own very distinct story of cross-sectoral mm. uh, collaboration. So that, that that's the main event that I would encourage you to, mm. to look to, especially the uh, award ceremony uh, this year at the presidential hackathon also includes international teams uh, as well as uh, the counter coronavirus hackathon. Uh, and so, yeah, that's a lot of good stories uh, mm. right there. Uh, of course, next year is an annual thing, right? So starting early next year, we're going to have another presidential hackathon and hopefully with vaccines, fingers crossed, uh, it will be a um, uh, even larger gathering. Mm. Okay, great. So the next presidential hackathon is the beginning of next year? Yeah, so the process of course starts really early mm. uh, and then it, it goes all the way until like um, September or something. Mm. Yeah. Okay, oh well. It goes, oh so it's, it's currently taking place and then September yeah, is, yeah, yeah. is there a kind of... Yeah, it's a, a war ceremony. Ah, the war, yeah, war you can check the website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. And um, with the filming would yeah, you... I'm wearing the presidential high school t-shirt. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's yeah. great. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um with the filming would you be interested in mm -hmm. kind of us shadowing you about mm -hmm. in your everyday life mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um perhaps going out for a meal and interacting with members of the public or mm -hmm. Thing yeah, that there's like. plenty of footages like that mm. on our YouTube channel. Mm. So I would encourage you to do that mm. first, like check the footage that you have uh, in your yeah. access. But uh, as long as it's in the social innovation lab, mm. that's okay. Feel free to, to come. I mean, people do a lot of selfies and filmmaking mm. there anyway. Uh, and yeah. so, so it is a free for all space. Mm. Uh, and, th and that's because the design is an open space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the um, the visuals, something I've seen recently is the, um, a photo shoot, a very fashionable one. Um, and mm -hmm. is, is that... A lot of that is done in the social innovation yeah. world. Mm -hmm. oh, great. The, the initial batch uh, by uh, uh, the, the uh, random persons on Twitter <laughs> suddenly <laughs> banding together and, and, and saying, I really want to uh, take a shot of um, Audrey's pictures, uh, and I just replied saying, sure, why not? Uh, mm. That initial batch was uh, all um, taken in the session innovation lab. Mm. Uh, I think the, the Vogue set was also in the session innovation mm. lab. Uh, UDN and many other uh, mainstream media. Uh, Verse, which is going to be a new magazine by Zhang yeah. uh, it was also entirely shot in the session innovation lab. Mm. Yeah. Okay, oh, wonderful. I, I was thinking that since you mentioned mm -hmm. that there has been a lot of uh, footages available and yeah. especially I think the last one, last yeah. thing that you mentioned, is yeah. it Neil? Because yeah. uh, you said that they have some footages yeah. but they haven't really had a chance to That's maybe right. think about That's right. other they, things. They, they have two batches that. of footages, so, right? Yeah. One is uh, just um, people, popular YouTubers, yeah. interviewing, uh, and also uh, our previous vice president yeah. did a crash course yeah. on, on epidemiology. So you can check out all the footages they produce and the YouTubers remixes of them in Taiwan mm -hmm. can help that us. Mm -hmm. But then uh, they work with uh, Roller.cc, did another uh, set, uh, I think they did an interview with me, also yeah. on Social yeah. Innovation Lab, and also started uh, drafting. Uh, some plans, uh, but they, I don't think they have distribution arranged yet yeah. uh, for the for the second set. Mm. Uh, and and they're, they're crowdfunded, so they have to make an account to the crowd that mm. is a good use of their money, basically. Do you think that yeah. would be good for Charlotte and, and mm. myself, obviously, be helping mm. her to reach out to the team mm -hmm. and then see that if they would yeah, yeah, want I'm sure, someone I'm sure to you can you can talk to, to Darius and Adi. Yeah. Uh, you probably already have their contact anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I they're on Twitter. I, do, but yeah, yeah. But it's worth uh -huh. trying. They're they're sure, on Twitter. Sure, sure. Yeah, they're not Twitter. Yeah. So, so <laughs> they're they're easy to reach. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think um, that can help that us. It, it's really interesting because it's a by itself a good story to tell. Mm. Like if your film talks about how it can help that us, and I'm sure they'll be very happy because yeah. uh, that's like what I call track zero diplomacy. Uh, so it's um, really visible. Uh, started multiple Twitter trendy uh, hashtags mm. uh, and our own foreign service, including myself, uh, referring to that all the time, uh, literally in the pre-WHA uh, video conference with 14 jurisdictions. Uh, that's the main go-to website that I invite them to check, but our government has zero control over that website. Mm. <laughs> so, so it's our, our flagship um, like um, diplomatic um, corpse 
but uh, it's crowdfunded, crowdsourced, uh, and we have no control over it. Mm. So that by itself is a really good story. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And the, the management of that website, has that mm. taken place in the social innovation lab, people who work there? No, it started on this platform called Zerzo. Mm. Uh, and, and I believe Jamie knows somebody <laughs> on it, so they came as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, Jamie knows everyone. <laughs> 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 it just so happens that we, we know this is a farm very early. Um, mm. um, so anyway, yeah, I, I had a uh, also CC licensed public conversation with um, Xu Zhen, uh, the, the, the person who uh, worked with Taiwan Canada through their crowdfunding campaign uh, as well. So it's literally started on a crowdfunding website. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Yeah. And um, okay, so in the in in the rest of the year, mm -hmm. so you're it's kind of the presidential hackathon, mm -hmm. preparing for that in the next year, mm -hmm. and then are there any other key challenges for, for Taiwan mm -hmm. that you think are coming up that you will be involved in? Um, I don't know. Mm. I have no idea. So the mirror ball. Uh, <laughs> right, so so I mean no, nobody is, is sure of uh, what will look like mm. um, for the even the pandemic itself. Mm. The vaccine may get developed very quickly or it may not arrive by the end of the year. Mm. Uh, we may expand the travel bubble significantly, or it may not because of the third wave or fourth wave. Mm. Uh, we, we don't know. <laughs> and, and so uh, what we're doing is to be as prepared as we can mm. to stimulate uh, local uh, tourism and local economy mm. uh, and hope for the best in terms of the vaccine uh, research. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure if you ask, every other uh, COVID team uh, around the world, they are pr pretty much uh, conveying the same message. Yes, yeah. 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 Okay. Do you have any other thoughts or questions? No, I think that's, yeah, that, that's great. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so I think what uh, mm. we can do or is to mm. kind of plug into uh, the research of the mm. existing footage a bit more. Mm. And there's there's chance I think we can develop something around yeah. that as a pitch uh, uh, and especially I think I'm, I'm I, f I feel that mm -hmm. I'm quite interested in exploring the opportunities with collaborating with other teams mm -hmm. well. yeah that's so, right yeah yeah and also collaborate with our own filmmaker yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah yeah, Hi. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our filmmaker is um, like very creative uh, mm. and actually the main branding of PETIS, uh, the uh, kind of open government uh, ideas that were at the beginning quite hard to convey, um, mm. uh, directors and found all the very funny, interesting ways uh, to, to, to convey mm. those messages. So mm. yeah, he may have uh, his own thoughts around mm. that uh, as well. So yeah, so exchange can I, can I have a question? <laughs> uh, yeah. um, I think it, it sounds like there's multiple teams are working yes. on this, which is which is great because mm -hmm. I think it shows that people are interested yes. in this. But in terms of the outlet mm -hmm. for yourself or your team, mm -hmm. do you think that there's any type that would, mm -hmm. from your point of view, be, be kind of useful or be mm -hmm. kind of strategic? Yeah, strategically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or something mm -hmm. that because because I because because I, I think that a lot of the footage like the idea of uh, you know, open source footage, mm -hmm. Creative Commons. That mm -hmm. it means that it's transparent, mm -hmm. which is I think it's it's very important for mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Message also open for that. interpretation. That's, yeah. that's what, why it's there. Yeah. Right. So even if people who make I don't know hip hop songs uh, or, or the Dos Monos yeah. uh, band from, from Japan, right? Literally a rap band yeah. uh, just took part of my interview footage mm. and remixed it into their rap songs. Nice. Uh, and and like that's not the kind of film that <laughs> I you imagined were, yeah. when we were producing this material. But the yeah. great thing about Creative Commons is that they don't have to ask for my permission. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's the kind of open-ended uh, creativity uh, that I seek to foster. Uh, mm. And so uh, at the moment, the most practical platforms are still uh, YouTube uh, and uh, the usual channels like Flickr, uh, yeah. Twitter, Facebook, and so on. Mm. Uh, but uh, I mean, that's just for the discoverability. Uh, if people curate and edit and post it on Wired and so on, of course, they tend to work with the uh, target audience of that outlet, uh, mm. at which uh, point of course it becomes mostly their creation mm. <laughs> and I'm just the source material that they use. Yeah, mm. yeah I see. Mm. Are you um, are you giving any talks internationally to mm. any groups in the next month or two? 
Uh, literally every day. So mm. <laughs> yeah, if you check the our uh, PTIS uh, YouTube channel, mm. you see that pretty much every day uh, or so we post conversation with international mm. audiences as well as domestic ones. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. I mean, it just sounds like there's a, a wealth of, of things to dig into, mm -hmm. um, and it's a it's a great story, something great for for people to mm -hmm. to see and understand. Yeah, yeah, and and I highly recommend like after you, for example, if you're in your research, you read a recent Wired article. For each yes. of those articles, there's yeah. also a you can view source. You can go back to the Say It website mm -hmm. and see the actual transcript that my conversation with the reporter how it looks like. Mm. Right. So uh, that's uh, two purposes. Uh, one is that there may be things that uh, they omitted because it doesn't fit their uh, target audience, mm. but you can nevertheless reuse and expand. Mm. And the second thing is that the source material tend to hyperlink uh, into other source materials. So uh, each conversation with a professional investigative journalist serves as kind of a snapshot or an outline of mm. the available source materials out there because it, there's just too much material. Mm. Right? So anything that's more like a, a index or an outline saves you time. Mm. Okay. Mm. And in the in in the article when um, mm -hmm. the the journalist was exploring mm -hmm. it, and my upbringing, Taoism, things like that. Well, yeah. uh -huh. more the sunflower. Yeah. Well, I think more interestingly, yeah. the um, uh -huh. your your philosophy as mm -hmm. as being a facilitator, yeah, and then the discussion that there are mm -hmm. people who who wish for you to mm -hmm. kind of take a yeah. different approach. Yeah, Andrew Leonard um, had like five paragraphs mm. devoted to that very uh, attention. Yeah. yeah, and is mm -hmm. that something that you see in your work, that people discuss that with you in your mm -hmm. work, or is it more people talk about mm -hmm. you to other people about that? No, it's, it's all in my head, mm. right? Uh, it's about um, so uh, how much force do I make uh, of my suggestions, mm. right? Uh, on one side, it could be coercive, like it's my way or highway. Right? Mm. Uh, on the other side, it could be purely nudging or suggestive. Uh, but uh, in the middle, there's a whole spectrum mm. of um, tonality <laughs> mm. that, that I can attribute uh, to the messages that I send across. But it's mostly in my head. Mm. Yeah. And and do you, do you have people? in a work context or people when you're engaging with civil society saying that they wish that you would behave in a different way or show a different type of leadership? Well, there's um, any number of people saying that right now. Mm. Right, so if I just do a search right now on social media, I see literally in the past one hour, there's more than 100 people making concrete suggestions about mm. my work. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, it's it's literally hundreds of suggestions every hour. Mm. Yeah. And do you allow any of those to sway you? Or? Of course, of course. Yeah. If it's a better idea, then mm. I just take immediately. Yeah. And do, do, in terms of other politicians, are they struck by your approach or mm. have, have they been have they changed their approach in, in mm -hmm. response? Well, I think this fast, fair, fun um, I merely describe uh, mm -hmm. what's what's out there, so it's not like um, they hear fast fair fun and decided to be fast fair and fun. Mm -hmm. It's more like I summarize it's the political response system to the coronavirus uh, pandemic and also the infodemic, mm -hmm. and is the way that I uh, summarize these learnings. It's not like uh, I'm a, a um, leading indicator is <laughs> I'm more like a trailing indicator mm -hmm. <laughs> in a sense that these happened and I uh, did some theorization. Mm, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, do you, fi do you find it interesting that there's this political culture and, and understanding of, of leadership mm -hmm. and, and there's the, a contrast with how mm -hmm. you're conducting yourself? Do you, mm -hmm. do you see that kind of day to day? Do you see the difference? No, I, I don't think there's um, a, a I mean, there's certainly a contrast, but it's not a difference. Mm. Uh, the thing is that uh, the contrast um, is basically there's like vertical ministers that does this kind of um, uh, reporting and a commanding relationship. Mm. Uh, there's a top-down, bottom-up, 
and so on, because the ministries are structured vertically. Mm. And we, as uh, horizontal ministers, our Minister with our portfolio mm. works horizontally uh, in the sense that we look at different values and co create common values out of those very different positions mm. that each ministry take. Uh, so, just by the nature of the work of being a horizontal minister, uh, basically says that my main uh, contribution is going to be connecting those different pillars. Mm. So it's contrasting, of course. There's mm. some um, parts in the building that are connecting mm. bridges. There are some parts of the um, building that are pillars, uh, mm. that are vertical. Uh, but uh, you wouldn't say, you know, these are differences. Mm. Like it is the bridges trying to convince the pillars to become bridges. It doesn't really work. But anyway, <laughs> so, so it, it's, it's all a supporting structure. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that was, I think that's part of the interview that I was most interested mm. um, and the, because it kind of boils down to you staying strong in your philosophy and your mm. approach mm. Um, and there's the, a culture out there that could mm. change it but staying focused. Uh, um, well, that, but that's what horizontal ministries do. Mm. It, I, I'm sure the other seven horizontal ministries would say the same. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the point here is that uh, there are people uh, who enjoy uh, working horizontally more mm. and there are people who enjoy working vertically more uh, and for example when people in Japan compare me to their IT minister I often say it's a it's not a good comparison because mm. we do have a vertical minister for science and technology uh, and what I'm doing is a digital, as digital minister connecting the technology to for example um, education connecting the te technology to, for example, health. Mm. Uh, but I'm not by myself the health minister mm. or the science te technology minister. Uh, and well, these two ministers are also my father's age. Mm. <laughs> and so uh, there's there's room for both vertical pillars mm. and horizontal bridges. And, and that's my main point. Mm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, great. Oh, well, it was a great, really great article. I really, mm. I just, I'd read, been reading lots of other articles mm. and just, hadn't gotten to the meat of it mm. and then this one was out last night and I was just like oh really mm. able to to dig in and, and see your work yeah so, 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 so I agree with um, Andrew's take on this mm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh great yeah well I think um we we can go in and make some networks and make some plans mm. and um I think there's a lot out there to dig into okay mm. awesome mm. thank you yeah thank you thank yeah you. thanks very much thank you mm. Okay, yeah, I think cheers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.